Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side-scroller series. In today's video we are going to be starting work on our abilities. So if you take a look at my design mock-up here, on the left hand side you've got a couple of abilities the player are going to be able to use. You can see one of them here is the little boots. We are going to be creating a little speed power-up ability in today's video. So basically when the pl player presses the button for that ability, they'll go a little bit quicker for about 5 seconds and that's also going to use some of the player's fuel that we've already set up in the bar at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started and dive in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the icon on the player's screen so they can actually see they have the abilities. So to do that I need to go into my blueprints folder give it a second to load up and then we also need to go ahead and open up the heads up display widget and we've got to put it in there. So just give that a couple of seconds to load up and we'll do that. So whoopsie. Uh, so go ahead and open up HUD and we also need to import the graphic for the boots already. So if you haven't got the latest version of the files, you can download it in the download link in the description below. And you can see it's AB Water Boots here. Now it's not the right name, but ignore, ignore that. Just go ahead and click it and drag it into your content browser to import it into the engine. Let's give that a second. Let's go back. So yeah, like I said, just go ahead and drag it into the content browser to import it into the engine, and then hopefully you should get the little preview image of it there. Now with the heads up display widget inside of here, go ahead and add an image, and then in this image, just go ahead and set the brush image to AB Water Boots. There you are, and because we've already set up all the display stuff, it will pop up on the screen just fine. Just go ahead and resize that and put it into position. For me, I'm going to have this as the first ability, and I'm going to sort of have it at the top left hand corner just like that. Once you've done that, go over to your anchors and anchor it to the left hand side of the screen as well. That way, all of the abilities are going to be in the same position regardless of the screen resolution. So if I go ahead and press play now, you should be able to see it on the top left hand corner. It looks a little bit small so we might want to resize that. So just go ahead and open up the HUD widget once again. And then just make it a little bit bigger just like that and pop it in. There you are. So now we actually need to work on the functionality side of things. So what we need to do is actually set up some kind of input and then when the player presses that button basically go into the character settings and adjust the character movement speed so they go a little bit quicker for a while. So what we need to do then, we are going to be setting up the input for that properly. Open up your project settings, give it a moment to open up, and then go on to the input section. So scroll down and find that. And then under action mapping, go ahead and press plus on there, and then just add one in for speed boost. Just like that. And under the control that we're going to use, we're just going to use the keyboard, and then we are going to keybind this to 1 and just go ahead and chuck that in. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to have the first ability set to 1, the second ability set to 2, 3, 4 and so on. So if we go back into this, we're just going to leave it just like that. We don't want the player to have to hold down shift and 1, control and 1 or anything like that, so that is just fine. Now because we're actually playing around with the speed of the character itself, we need to open up the side scroller character blueprint and we need to go ahead and do some things in here. So if we right click inside of here and then if we type in speed boost You should actually get the action event for this now and then on here You can see we've got pressed and released So what we need to do is pretty much create some script that hooks up to this little pressed node So for us, it's going to be quite simple. All we need to do is get the character movement Cool, so like I said, we need to get a reference to character movement. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to go over to the components panel in the top left hand corner and we're going to get the reference. Drag it down into your blue prints panel and then drag out the little plus thing to set character movement speed or character speed. Should be able to find it, there it is, set max walk speed, just go ahead and hook that up. And what we need to do now is we need to hook this up to pressed. The default walks, walking speed at the moment is 600, so we need to pretty much double that to make the player go twice as fast as normal. So if we were to set this to something like 1200 and compile it, you'll see the player will actually move twice as fast and that's going to happen indefinitely. So let me go ahead and show you that. So you press 1, you can see he's now going a lot faster when you walk along. But we don't want this to happen, we want there to be a delay, so basically the player when they press it, they get the boost for about 10 seconds and then it goes back to normal. 
So the way we are going to do that is we are pretty much going to have this set node. We're going to add in a delay. So delay. Duration is going to be 5 seconds. And then we're going to do the same thing with set max walk speed. So we're going to copy this, control C and control V. And then we are pretty much going to set it back down to 600. So then after 5 seconds it's going to go back down. So the way we're going to test this is I'm going to add in a couple of print strings to pretty much print onto the string onto the screen telling them it's slowed down. So I'm just going to type in slow on this one and I'm also going to add one in between here as well for print string and this one is just going to say fast. So if I go ahead and compile this, press play, just give it a moment. So if I press 1 it's going to say fast and I'm walking a lot faster than usual. After a couple of seconds it's going to go to slow and we are back to the normal speed. So that is working all good. So there's one last thing that I do want to do is I need to make sure the player has enough fuel to be able to actually use the speed boost. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to run a bit of conditioning. We're going to add in a branch just here, just before all of the magic script. So I'm going to add in branch. And then the condition is pretty much our way of checking the player's fuel to see if they've got enough. And we're also going to be taken away from the fuel when they use it. So what we're going to do is float and we are going to be making sure that it is greater than the required amount. So returns true if A is greater than or equal to B. So that's exactly what we want. And we need to put player fuel into the first node. Hook it in just like that. And then in the second one, basically the amount of fuel we're going to be using for this is going to be 0 0.1. And then if it's true, it's going to continue to do this. If it's false, I'm just going to tell, just run a print string telling them they don't have enough fuel. Now, later on, we're going to be doing a bit of script in this to actually make it pop up a little message on the screen, but that's for another episode. So for this print string, I'm just going to tell it to tell you to have, you have you do not have enough fuel. So let's go ahead and test this now. So if I compile it, by default the player shouldn't have any fuel and if I press 1 it says you don't have enough fuel. And you can also see it sort of running there and going straight down to you don't have enough fuel in the little simulated view. Cool. So what we need to do now then, one last thing, is we actually need to tell it to remove some of the player's fuel when they actually go ahead and use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out true and just before it does set everything, we're going to tell it to set player fuel. And then we are just going to grab the integer, not integer, float minus float node and we are pretty much going to tell it to take away 0 0.1 from the player fuel get a reference to the player fuel and hook it up just like that. Now the script is starting to look a little bit complex, it's not too bad. If you guys do get confused or anything, feel free to just pause the video and take a look at all of the script that we've got here, but that is everything that we need for the player fuel. So let's go ahead and compile this and test it one last time. If I press 1 initially, it's going to say you do not have enough fuel, but if I go ahead and pick up this little fuel pickup, it's now going to say fast and I'm running a little bit quicker. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for this video. We are going to be working on the visual side of things a little bit later on, such as the message that doesn't tell you you have enough fuel, and also we're going to have some kind of screen vignette as well that's going to be flashing and making it look all cool. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, I'll see you next time, your boy Virtus, signing out.